Hi guys, it's Stacy from Clothes Live On and welcome back to probably what will be my last Posh Fest related video. I just wanted to do a follow up video with all of my thoughts on Posh Fest 2019 and then also answer some questions that I got via Instagram. Um, so first things first, let's talk about the hackathon. The hackathon is always my favorite part of Posh Fest. Although I will admit that I missed like most of the hackathon this year. Uh, my friend Emily and I went off and we took pictures and then we wanted to get back in time for the hackathon, but they started the hackathon, I wanna say like 15 minutes early or something. They started it quite early. So we got back at the scheduled start time of the hackathon, but they had already revealed two of the three things. So the first thing that is coming and the first two things actually are coming within, they said a couple of weeks. So the first one is private listing fields. And that is the one that I am like super, super ecstatic about. Um, so we are going to, when you list, there's going to be at the bottom of your like listing page, there's going to be additional details and you can put in a SKU. So like your inventory number, which will be awesome. I don't necessarily have my inventory number good to go when I'm doing my listing, but maybe I will kind of rearrange my system so that I have that ahead of time. Um, you can also put in your item cost, which will be amazing because then if you get an offer, um, you can kind of see what price you paid and see if you think you should take it or not. So I'm excited about that. And there'll be an other category. So I guess if you want to write any details about anything, you can put that there also. So private listing fields, I think is like the most exciting thing that will be coming for us. And kind of paired with that, we are now going to be getting a My Inventory Report. Right now we have a My Sales Report. You can look at all of the sales you've made for any period of time that you want but you're gonna be able to track your inventory. They're saying you won't need to track your own spreadsheets. Definitely gonna track my own spreadsheets still, but it will be a very useful tool. It'll have things like how long the item has been listed. If you're using the like the private SKUs, I think it'll track you know, your cost of items, when you listed it, it'll track a lot of stuff for you in terms of what is currently listed. So I think that will be really awesome. I'm very excited about that also. And then the last, Hackathon reveal is the only one that I'm not excited for. I think it's going to be a hot mess and an epic flop, but we will see. So they are going to be releasing, I think they said it will be within a few months. Um, they're going to be releasing posh stories. So basically like Instagram stories, it will be at the very top of your news feed. Anyone can create them and you can watch stories. So you can make little like videos basically. And in those videos, you can link to your closet, the item, the listing in your closet. So essentially the idea is like, oh, say you're wearing a dress and then you like are out and about on the dress and the dress is listed in your closet. Then you would link your, the video of you wearing that dress, you would link your listing and someone can then buy that item. Um, the problem I think that's going to come about is everyone is just going to link everything from their closet and their stories and not to mention that we are all like we are promoted to just follow as many people as possible. So you're going to have an endless amount of stories. I just think there's not going to be a lot of value in stories. Also, like for the most part, I don't think people wear what is listed in their closet, even when it's from their personal closet. I feel like if it's up for sale in Poshmark, you're no longer wearing it. So I don't super see the value in Posh Stories, but that's just from what they were showing. Maybe it will be different once it's released, but just right now, I think it's just gonna like be more clutter on Poshmark. I don't think it's gonna really bring any value or any sales. That's just my personal thought on that though. Okay, so then I just wanted to discuss what I thought was like the best and the worst values at Posh Fest. So for me, in terms of the actual conference itself, the best value for me was the breakout sessions. I thought that they were really well done. I thought the speakers were chosen wisely and I thought that they overall had a lot of value. I thought the questions asked in them were good and all of that. Um, I only actually attended two of them for being fair because I was speaking at some of them, but I was told that my session was really good also and that people got a lot out of it. I attended the YouTube session, um, it was interesting but I have downloaded two buddy per Nicole State's recommendation. So that would, you know, I took something out of it there. I enjoyed having someone who worked at YouTube there. I actually wish he got to speak more. I think he 
didn't get enough questions directed toward him and I thought like later on um, that he like voluntarily wasn't speaking as much but I think there would have been a lot to learn from him. I actually have said that I wish I stayed for all three of the YouTube sessions because I think there was probably things that he offered later that I missed out on hearing and I think that he probably had invaluable information. I wish I could have just picked his brain honestly. Um, next is for me networking. That's all every year I say that networking is a benefit for me. I love networking. Um, so yeah, that was a really big benefit for me was just getting to talk to people that I follow on Instagram or people who, you know, are different from me and just, I love the networking aspect of it. I love talking to other resellers. Um, and third for me is always the photo ops, um, Poshmark. They actually went less all out this year than previous years in terms of photo ops. I actually thought Chicago was one of the best ones because they had everyone's closet names on a wall and there was just some really beautiful setups and the lighting was really good in Chicago. Last year they had some pretty good ones but the lighting was bad. This year the venue had much better lighting. I thought that their really only good photo ops were on the second level so they were all really close together. But right outside the venue was this like mural wall that basically everyone at Poshfest went and took pictures at. It was beautiful. Always love the photo ops at Poshfest. Also like Arizona is just like a beautiful place. Phoenix was beautiful. So there was lots of cacti to take pictures with and just I thought it was a very beautiful photogenic place. Um, things I did not like about Poshfest. I did not enjoy the data panel, which was the end of day one. I actually left during the panel because I was like so bored. I thought the info they were giving was ridiculous and beyond basic. Like I wouldn't even care if you were brand new to Poshmark. You could find that info out so easily just from any reseller. I think that Poshmark needs to focus more on like info information that's not easily attainable just from anywhere. So basically they were saying things like, oh, if you share your closet, you're 70% more likely to make a sale. If you include the brand name and the title, you're 70% more likely to make a sale. Just stuff that I was like, this is so, 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 so basic. Anyone, even if they went and did a closet consultation at Posh Fest, if they weren't already including the title, they're going to get told that at their closet consultation. So I just wish that the info in the data panel had been more in depth. I thought in theory that that sounded like it was going to be an amazing panel, but really there was nothing to take away from it. I didn't know anyone who didn't think that that panel was just ridiculous and a waste of time, honestly. Um, next, same as last year, I thought the food wasn't that great. It was better on day two than on day one, and overall I think it was better than last year's food. But I think we sink a lot of money into these Posh Fest tickets. It was $229 plus fees to attend Posh Fest. Um, so I thought the food should have been improved, honestly. Like, I think they should hire a local restaurant to cater because I think it would be way better than what we're getting served. Um, on day one, the chicken was like weird. It was dry. They had fried chicken on day two, also dry and not very good. The sides were better on day two, like the mac and cheese was good. The potato salad really needed salt, which luckily they had salt out. Um, they had mashed potatoes on both days. It was good, but like it wasn't the most warm, even though it was on warmers. Um, yeah, just their food can always use improvement in my opinion. And then part of the worst for me, which does go into the Q&A, someone asked me why didn't I like the Posh Fest party and party venue was on my worst list. I thought that the party was weird. I had fun and eventually because like I kept drinking until it became fun for being honest. Um, but when I walked in, um, the atmosphere is cool, but there was like a lady dancing with a light up hula hoop. There was a boxing ring inside and they had a live band performing in the boxing ring, which the idea was cool, but the music was so loud that you were screaming at each other. Like my throat hurt the next day. It was a lot. There was like, um, basically like rings hanging from the ceiling that people were doing like gymnastics inside up. It was very weird. I thought it was a weird use of money, honestly. Um, I would have preferred a DJ with like slightly quieter music so that people could talk because literally all of Posh Fest is about networking. So it, I don't know why you would put us in a situation where it's very hard to network. Um, there was restrooms inside, but there was only three stalls and they had like trailer restrooms outside which was very weird. I mean, they were nice trailer restrooms, but still it was essentially like almost using like 
an airplane bathroom like it was a pedal to flush it it was very weird there was only two of those inside so there was five bathrooms for um women at the posh party and if you know anything about posh fest it's mostly women i think they said there was like 150 men this year so i assume it was the same amount of men's bathrooms about but like there's far less men so it doesn't become a problem then I, um, even at the conference themselves, they turned one of the men's bathrooms into a women's, like they put a sign over it. I think they needed something similar for the party just because the bathroom situation was not great. Um, but yeah, it was very, it was way too loud. Um, I thought it was pretty cramped. I think they got too small of a space, honestly, for how big the conference was. Uh, to me, that part just could have used a lot of improvement. Um, there was lots of bars though, so I'll give them that. Like if you wanted a drink, it was pretty easy to find one. Um, all right, now I'm just gonna answer the questions that I got on Instagram. There's only a few since I already answered the why didn't I like the party thing. So um, one was the best thing about Poshvest besides the party or besides like the PFF networking aspect. I think the breakout sessions were great, like I already said. I think they did a phenomenal job picking their speakers there. Um, I did attend the one that Voyages of Verb did. I thought that was also great. I had heard a lot of what she was gonna say because I got to hang out with her on Monday ahead of time. So I heard a lot of what she was gonna say in that session, but I thought that she had a lot of valuable information. I thought a lot of the speakers had a lot to offer on what they were speaking about. So for me, the best part was the breakout sessions. I think that they chose their speakers very well for that. I actually think they should compensate their speakers for how great of a job they did. Just saying. Um, and the other one that I'm gonna answer is, what did I love most about Posh Fest and what did I regret most about attending? So um, I'll kind of just make that a little like story. So for me, I went for a week. I thought that was a little too long. I actually think five days would have been ideal though. Going early had its benefits. I got to hang out with Kristen and Kevin and they were very busy the rest of the time that we were there. But because I was there so early, I was able to spend like an entire day with them. We went sourcing together, we grabbed lunch together and we went and got our nails done together. So that was like, a lot of time with them. I took a lot out of that. I had an amazing day. That was one of my favorite days of being in Phoenix was hanging out with them. So there was that for me. Like, I think I went a little too long. I was getting really homesick and like, I don't hang out with people a lot. I have friends here, but like I'm because of what I do, I'm like by myself a lot. So I think um, socializing on the level that I did during Posh Fest took a lot out of me. So being there a week was like a lot for me. And I think five days would have been better for me. Um, my worst thing about attending, I guess there was that, was me saying that I was there for so long, but that was a benefit and a downfall. Like it had both for me. Um, I thought the sourcing in Phoenix was not great. I got the most stuff at last chance. Goodwills I didn't have a lot of luck at. I tried some other thrift stores. I just thought those weren't very great. So for me, like, would I go back to Phoenix to try and source or to try and get my money back? No, not necessarily. I don't think it was worth it outside of last chance, but I have one of those. I have a last chance in Illinois. It's much further away for being fair. But I can go there, it's about an hour drive for me, but also all of my thrift stores are also amazing. Um, so I prefer sourcing in Chicago by a lot. Um, but I feel like that's a lot of outside of the conference. Um, I don't know, I just thought the conference was, I always think it's good, but I always think it's a lot more about networking. I really just wish they could add a little more value in their panels. The breakouts were a lot better this year, but still I thought the panels overall weren't that great. I didn't take a lot out of them. Um, I sunk a lot of money into it and that's just part of going to Posh Fest, but I don't feel like I necessarily got the most out of it. Um, networking was great, but a lot of people at this point I had already met or if I hadn't met them, I didn't necessarily get to talk to them for the longest time. Now, some people who follow me, I met them and I had great conversations with them and that was phenomenal. I love anyone who like talked to me and we actually had like an awesome conversation. Like I took a lot out of that. Thank you so much for doing that. There was definitely a few people, even if you just said hi to me, I'm not saying that like I didn't appreciate that, but there were some people where like I had good conversations with them 
And that's a good takeaway for me too, I guess, was like anyone that like I made sure I had a good conversation with them, I took a lot of value out of that versus just me coming up to them and saying like, I follow you, can I take a picture with you kind of thing. Um, so I talked a lot to Jade. We hung out one night, which is fashion without trash in. Like I said, I hung out with Voyage as a verb. I went over to a British Poshers Airbnb ahead of time. So I got to talk to some people there. And just when I could, I really tried to make my conversations with people valuable for myself and for them. So my example that I put on Instagram too was Trendset Chic. I know it was her first time leaving her son. So I asked how she was doing and I meant it. I cared how she was doing. So for me, it was just stuff like that. Checking in with people or thanking them for things that they had said to me on Instagram that impacted me or that they had posted that impacted me. Thanking them for stuff like that. I took a lot of value out of that. So I guess my note is if you go to Posh Fest next year, try to have valuable conversations with people, like really think about something they've said or done that has impacted you or something that's going on with their life that you want to follow up with. It'll be way more meaningful for both of you if you can do something like that. I hope that answers that question. I don't know. I just, that's the kind of point that I want to make though, is just like that was valuable to me is if you actually had like a true conversation with people and it wasn't just like super small talk kind of thing because I remember the people that I end up talk to and it was great. Like I had someone thank me for my post about being anxious before I spoke and we talked for a while and she like later apologized and I was like, don't apologize. That was a great conversation for me. Like I love not doing small talk if we're being honest. Um, but yeah, I guess that's overall my thoughts for Posh Fest 2019. Do I plan to go to next year? For the most part. Next year is like a weird up in the air part for me. I'm going to be moving over the summer, uh, probably to Seattle. So it's like location dependent. Where am I financially? Although the tickets will go on sale before I move. So I would say most likely I am attending Posh Fest next year, but we will see. I will be sad if I don't attend it. I love attending it. I get a lot out of it for networking more than anything, but I will have like such fear of missing out if I don't go. So I probably will be there, but that's it for this Posh Fest video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye.